And today I'm going to talk with you about radical acceptance. Now what is radical acceptance? Well, it falls under the DBT distress tolerance tools and skills that you learn. And the reason that they created all of these different tools is because many people they find struggle with overwhelming emotions a lot of the time. And those emotions make their life, for lack of a better term, pretty miserable. And so what do we do when we're feeling all of these overwhelming, horrible emotions or we're feeling like run over by them? We have to learn ways to tolerate it. Distress tolerance. And the main thing that they believe, and I'm referencing, if you remember, my handy dandy DBT workbook that is amazing. If you haven't picked it up, I encourage you to pick one up. It's in my Amazon widget on my website, katiemorton.com. But one of the important things that they mention in DBT is that sometimes pain can be avoided, but many times or sometimes pain can't be avoided, but many times suffering can. And that is the whole belief that things are going to happen to us. We're going to have bad experiences. And if we keep ruminating on those experiences and re-wounding ourselves by doing that, we're increasing our suffering. Are you following? So we have these different tools in our toolbox of distress tolerance tools to help us get out of that cycle so that we can shorten the amount of time that we ourselves suffer when things happen and when we feel those overwhelming emotions, okay? Now the way that radical acceptance works is it's a distraction tool. Now distracting us from, and I'm reading my notes because DBT is very intense, it can temporarily stop us from thinking about our pain. And as a result of distracting us for that little bit of time, it can allow us to make a healthier decision that's not based on rage or intense feelings of emotion. It gives us that little bit of time, that little squishy space where we can stop, and we can think about the scenario, and we can decide a better way to react to it or to respond. Because reacting would be when we don't actually use our tools. An important thing to remember about radical acceptance is that distraction from it does not mean avoidance. Avoidance is when we actually choose not to deal with anything at all. And we're honestly distracting because something has happened and we have to find a proper way to deal with it. And they offer up some beginning to radical acceptance. They call them coping statements. Now, as you begin using radical acceptance, it's important that you kind of practice using these. Now, you don't; these aren't things you necessarily have to say out loud, but maybe when something happens, let's say even watching the morning news stirs up emotion in you and you start to feel a little bit overcome by emotion in your head or even out loud to yourself, utilize some of these statements. I just have a few options to share and these are all out of that book that I told you about. Now, the first option, I can't change what's already happened, so I'm already upset, or that person has already hurt my feelings. I can't change what happened. Just saying that over and over, kind of like a mantra. Radical, radical acceptance sounds a lot like mantras to me. It's no use fighting the past. Or, this moment is the result of over a million other decisions. Because sometimes we find we get stuck on one part of something that happened. Like if I had only just left earlier, if I had only just said, I'm sorry, I don't have time to talk about it. It wouldn't have gotten to where it is. And we go back to what I was talking to before. We ruminate on things and re-wound ourselves about situations that have happened in the past. So what we're talking about today is distress tolerance. And I want you to try to utilize some of these coping statements that I just gave you some examples of in real life and actually practice using this. Because radical acceptance is just one of the many tools of DBT that we can use in the moment when we feel like our emotions are just completely overriding any logical thought that we have. Does that make sense? So there are some ways you can practice this on your own. And like I said, it's just one of many tools that we'll go through. But if you would be willing to try watching the news, reading a newspaper, maybe getting on Facebook and reading about that friend that stirs up just a little bit of that overwhelming of emotion that you feel, and then utilize one of the coping statements that I read to you. Like, I can't change what has already happened. There's, it's no use fighting the past. 
Saying these is mantras in the moment when we're feeling emotion overwhelm us can help us calm. And like I said at the beginning, give us that little bit of cushion so that we can make healthier, happier decisions for us. Because we all want to build wonderful relationships with people, am I right? And using these tools can actually help us slow down our emotional process so that we respond thoughtfully rather than react. And I hope that you find this helpful. There's going to be a bunch of different DBT tools that we'll go through, but this one I think is the best to help us in the moment when we're feeling like, oh, everything's getting a little too much. These mantras that we can say to ourselves or coping statements can help calm us down. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. I put out videos all the time. And like I said, DBT is so intensive. There are so many different topics. And if you haven't had a chance to pick up this book, I have it on my Amazon widget on my website. So get a copy, it's amazing. And also, um, don't forget to check out katiemorton.com. There are tons of chat rooms and forums and great places for you to go where you can connect with others and get that extra support that we're all craving. He gets on his snowboard, he has a helmet on and he's like, thank you everybody, it's time to rock and roll. And he starts down the, it's just the cutest thing. I'm like, definitely, let's rock and roll. <laughs>